Um, okay, welcome back uh, to all the uh, training participants and uh, thank you, Mr. Jeffrey uh, and Asha. Uh, as uh, I just mentioned just now that the emphasis of the making for Malaysian smart city or uh, Malaysian city should be smart actually already emphasis or highlighted in the Malaysian economic and physical or, or spatial development plan. Uh, we have the starting with the Malaysian 11 plans uh, and might be followed in the Malaysian 12, 12 mission plan. And also in the national physical plans, uh, we have also in the national urbanization policy. Uh, actually, it's one to uh, try to uplift this uh, Malaysian city competi competitiveness uh, and support the Malaysian uh, commitment to the global agenda. And um, plan measure uh, right now is under Ministry of uh, Housing and Local Government, one of the uh, big federal agency that are going to spearhead the planning and implementation of the smart city in Malaysia. We are involved in the preparation of the uh, Malaysian Smart City Framework 2025, uh, has been mentioned by Dr. Siti before this. And uh, we also play the rules in assisting all the local governments to the planning and developments of the smart cities, uh, either in through the committee set up by the, our ministry and also as an advisory role in uh, preparing of these uh, uh, city smart uh, blueprint, like what we have done right now, partnering with the Ministry of uh, Federal Territory, with the uh, Kuala Lumpur City Hall, Putrajaya Corporation and Laban Corporation to formulate the Federal Territory Smart City Blueprints. And we are also in the process of preparing the IPO Smart City Blueprints together with the IPO City Council. Um, to overcome the future challenge, uh, we are also in the process of developing uh, Malaysian Urban Observatory as the National Smart City Data Integration Sharing uh, platform among the agencies. And this one actually trying to integrate all the main uh, smart city initiatives and it tend to master the uh, urban data trail for big data analytics. Uh, and the MUO uh, could only be start uh, in year 2021 in line with the national budgeting interest um, mission plan. Uh, this is, uh, but last year, uh, the end of last year, we worked with the Cisco System Malaysia and their partners, Quantela from India, uh, to develop the proof of concept of MUO to demonstrate and visualize the future of our uh, MUO that we are going to develop. And uh, we are also currently uh, working in collaboration with the Malaysian Department of Standards and also the multiple stakeholders uh, to develop a Malaysian Smart City Standard for Smart City Indicator. This is in line with the global indicator of the international standard of ISO 37122 uh, to measure the smart city implementation and accelerate the growth of smart city in Malaysia based on the global standard and benchmarking and also to guide the city leadership and other bodies uh, in the process of developing a clear and effective overall uh, smart city strategy. Um, so, uh, before uh, I summarize uh, my um, early introductory, uh, maybe I will, I will highlight that in 2017, uh, Frost and Sullivan uh, recommended all major smart city to implement a smart city solution through strategic partnerships with the solution providers. And as you know, that at the federal level, as well as the state and also at the uh, local authority level, we have to work with the very limited budget and with the <laughs> stringent budgeting system. And uh, I think some approaches have been done by our pilots uh, project in smart city, like uh, in Iskandar, 
uh, is come down Malaysia, they work with the UNDP and as in the Ministry uh, Housing and Local Government also uh, work very hard with the Korean government to get the funding for uh, developments of smart city in Malaysia. And um, I will summarize that the partnership Regardless, in the it is the between the PPP or uh, between the government agencies. Actually, this is the alternative that will overcome the tra traditional barrier uh, in getting the funding and the financing of the smart city project uh, by developing a new uh, technology potential to reduce costs, maybe recycling existing and legacy infrastructure assets, unlocking value and bringing the critical mass of players together to spur uh, economic developments. Uh, for that, uh, uh, over to you, Jeffrey. Thank you. Brilliant. Th thank you very much. And, and um, your comment about partnerships and using those partnerships to leverage this new technology and the efficiency, reducing costs, unlocking value, so important and yet difficult. I mean, it's complicated to create those relationships, those partnerships in order to deliver um, smart city solutions. Very exciting. Um, yes. I could, may, may, I, may I then pass on to um, the, the mayor of the city council of Penang Island for the next intervention, please. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. And good morning, everybody on this 112th day of MCO and also happy Georgetown World Heritage Day. Uh, I fully concur with what uh, this Dr. Siti uh, Muhazad presentation just now. Uh, smart city is not only the technology or how much you spend, it's more on the how smart the city leader deliver to their people. Anyway, uh, we are quite glad to see that uh, from the doctor just now, uh, Dr. Siti Muhazad. What we have practiced and what we have implemented here in the City Council of Penang Island is very in line uh, with your blueprint and also your seven uh, core businesses in your uh, smart city framework. I'll try to deliver or some something like uh, more on the reporting our KPI uh, to our KPKP uh, regarding our smart city here. I'll try to sum up in the five minutes time allocated to uh, me. So as we know, many cities in the world are now heading towards creating smart city to give the best to the people. So same thing here, we also started our city with a smart city initiative with a focus on creating an intelligent, livable, and happy city. We want to create an inclusive city where no one is left behind. And bear in mind, uh, we have to go to the basic that what we have and what our people want, that is, are the are more uh, critical and uh, essential. So the initiative we have implemented so far is to capitalize on our own resources and infrastructure for a sustainable and a livable city. We want to create a smart city using the low investment and high impact formula. Over the years, we have been putting in important infrastructure toward creating a smart city, such as our IOC intelligent operation center in our integrated local council solution or in short ILCS. We are leveraging on this infrastructure to manage our city. The IOC integrate system that provides visibility into overall city and this optimized operational efficiency. It enables MBPP to deliver services sustain sustainably while protecting the citizen. Additionally, data is collected from our IOC or IoT devices such as sensor, cameras and other smart appliances to be analyzed for pattern, trends, and anomalies. The data collected can be used to enhance city management, such as traffic and disaster management and mitigations. 
and these are our eyes in the skies. For example, during the uh, latest uh, movement control order or MCO, we leverage on our existing infrastructure such as our CCTV and PA system to monitor and blast out messages to the public on social distancing rules to prevent the spread of COVID-19. In terms of DMM, our sensors and CCTVs were able to keep track of impending disasters such as floods and fallen trees, especially during thunderstorm and heavy rainfall. That will make us to deploy our enforcer to the location sooner possible. When it comes to uh, managing a city, the local government cannot work alone. Engagement, empowerment, and participation are imperative in the implementation of any smart city initiative. This is where smart partnerships comes in. We have successful PPP projects such as the adaptive reuse of the shop houses, the Georgetown UNESCO World Heritage Site, and the Business Improvement District Scheme, or we call it BITS. As normal, funding is a common issue for most of the uh, municipality, and PPP is a good concept to approach to do more for less. The smart city also needs to be able to move its people and this is where smart mobility comes in. In this aspect, we have the MAS or mobility as a service. This is a holistic approach that brings together public and private transportation together to improve the level of service and to reduce the CO2 emission in the city. So our MAS here cover e-healing, public buses, our smart parking system, or intelligent video analytics, we also are working toward the RFID data, cycling, walking also is our focus. We are installing now a sensor in a parking lot under the Penang smart parking system. By using this system, driver can easily locate and guide it to the nearest empty parking lot using the apps. So this cut down the times for driver to spend searching the parking lot and also the traffic jam. We are currently planning a transit-oriented development, or TOD, in line with a focus on first mile and last mile connectivity. We are also planning to introduce water taxi to leverage on our coastal alignment as an additional mode of transportation. So City Council of Penang Island is currently rolling out our 5G infrastructure to empower people with new technologies. On top of that, we believe in cultivating future talents. This is where projects such as our makerspace comes in. So even though data is king, but we believe talent is everything. Finally, we feel it's important that smart city initiative must focus on the people while building resilience. We want to build a low carbon and compact city where people can live, learn, work and play. This is when we have a high happiness index in a thriving, livable city that we have a smart city for all. Thank you for that. Jeff, hand over to you. Excellent, fantastic. Really, really interesting presentation. Thank you. Um, and now I have more excuses to come visit Penang. You're most welcome. <laughs> and just to see all the different things that you're doing and the different um, uh, at the ways that you're engaging with the community and with citizens, really exciting. Um, I love the data is key, but talent is everything. And pulling out on all the capacity you've got and, um, and thinking about, as our present presenter mentioned earlier, um, the youth. And there's so much potential and capacity in the youth and how do we leverage that and capture it um, and the, the 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 use of the IOC very very exciting. Um, so let me let me not delay our next presentation from Subang. 
Uh, Madam President, would you please present next? Thank you, Jah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for having me in this uh, knowledge sharing session on smart city implementation. Uh, a brief on uh, Subang Jaya. We are a city of 16,180 hectares with a population of close to 1 million uh, people. And like any other local authority, our main function is to deliver urban services. And we have relied on technology to function and deliver our services better. This has been going on since the 80s when we first started with the financial management system, followed by property uh, tax database soon after. Since then, the smartization of work process and communication has become a permanent good in our budget. For Subang Jaya, it cost us around 6.5 million per year on hardware, system, software, and network um, connection every year. But does that make us smart or does money make any city smarter? I mean, that's the question that we're trying to answer today. Um, what actually defines a smart city? Um, KPKT has come up with the 92 indicators of measuring what smart cities are, and that can be used um, as a gauge um, as to how far we have come, and that becomes the uh, benchmarking for all cities in Malaysia to see how we have progressed and whether we are adhering to the international standard of being a smart city. Um, can we go to the next um, slide, please? Okay, next. In Subang Jaya, we have at least four major system applications, namely integrated finance management system. I believe almost all cities have this. Um, secondly, we have integrated revenue management system. Again, this is um, a staple in uh, all the local authorities. Thirdly is the office collaboration productivity system. This one is slightly uh, above the edge um, because we do have each department um, giving an input uh, every month on how they have progressed in achieving their target for that particular year and how are they using their budget every year. So it is all incorporated in this office collaboration productivity system. And we have a management integrated system also. Um, how do we approach um, smart city planning? Um, the use of technology is supposed to ease us. It is uh, a, a leverage that we use to uh, produce to, to deliver our services better. And um, how do we identify what to be focused on first? Uh, we have aligned with all the regional plans, um, even with the new urban uh, agenda and the sustainable development goals. That determines what we need to achieve more than the other um, priority, the challenges and issues and uh, demands from the people. Next. Uh, to do this, uh, Majlis Pembandaran Subang Jaya has incorporated its smart city framework into the five-year strategic plan. And uh, to do this, we have engaged with the people, uh, asked them what they wish for in a city that they desire to live in, um, what are the challenges and issues that they are facing, and come back to the office and think about how we use technology in order to overcome these uh, challenges and issues and to achieve what we desire as a city. Um, as a second stage, we uh, in Subang Jai, we have um, started a living lab that tried a few application and solutions before we uh, implement it in a full-fledged manner. Um, when we do our strategic plan for ICT for 2016 to 2020, we do sit with our stakeholders and we do sit with uh, some of our solution providers and identify the information uh, sorry, identified the targets that we can achieve um, for the next um, few years. That was done in 2020s. Now we have to come up with the um, smart city plan for 2025. And um, for that, uh, I'm going to tell you what we have focused on because uh, obviously uh, cities cannot be trying to do everything uh, uh, less 
we are spreading our resources too thin. Okay, next. Um, talking about partnership and living lab, in Subang Jaya, we have a living lab environment um, in a way that um, solution providers come, can come to us and propose a solution, but um, we need it to be tested for a few months. Normally, it, it takes six months for this uh, solution providers to test it in a living situation uh, before we can reconsider it for implementation on a bigger scale. So we call it Living Lab, and we have so far engaged with a couple of partners, uh, namely uh, Huawei, uh, SCS, uh, TM1, uh, Smart Slango, uh, Smart Slango Delivery Unit uh, with the police and state government, and also the um, company that deals with our cleanliness and garbage collection. So these are among the projects that are currently going on, and we have reached the end of the stage of the Living Lab. and. Now we are considering whether to uh, engage and, and, and uh, do this um, application on a wide scale basis. So the information and the learning process that we uh, did during this uh, living lab is very useful uh, uh, to both of us, to the solution providers who need to understand what the user requirements are and to us to understand uh, how it reaches to the people, whether this um, uh, solution that they are providing can really benefit the, the people, the general, the general public uh, as efficiently as possible. Next. Because each um, application will involve a huge investment, so it is good to try it out first. For Action Plan uh, Subang Jaya Smart City 1999, 1919 to, 19, uh, to 2024, we are focusing on uh, five main strategies, which are smart information, smart safety, smart traffic, uh, smart waste or more of a smart environment, and lastly, uh, smart disaster risk management. The objective is to become the catalyst for the development of a smart city. These projects that have been identified are only the beginning. Uh, we have to improve along the way and we shouldn't stop improving and learning and uh, adding on um, using leveraging technologies to deliver our services better. Uh, that, that is the second objective of all these um, action plans that we are doing. Uh, of course, we are trying to use as um, latest technology as possible uh, to ensure seamless management and fast and efficient access to information. Uh, once we have all this data, the public needs to access it, but before the public can access it, we need to analyze it in a way that it makes sense to them. And, and uh, for the management, I think local authorities in Malaysia need to have a strong, reliable data in order for it to be analyzed. Having data is one thing, but analyzing is another thing to ensure that we make a decision based on something concrete. We can guess on everything, and and um, but without the support of good data, our decision may stray. Our resources may be wasted. Okay, next. Um, the first um, focus that we are uh, doing is smart information, or what uh, Dr. Siti Muhaza was mentioning. This is for smart governance, and the smart. Um, information or smart governance, we have already identified 10 programs or projects. Uh, but the biggest one is the executive information system. This is much like uh, Penang's uh, integrated uh, information system with a dashboard. Um, we are trying to integrate all the data and the uh, information that all the 21 departments have and put it under one dashboard so that we can have um, the readings of or like the observatory that uh, Plan Malaysia is talking about, uh, what is going on and how, what, what needs to be improved and um, how we can uh, deliver our services better. So um, our EIS have um, come to this stage that we can um, at least uh, observe um, half of the departments in uh, Subang Jaya. Uh, other than that, we have the mobile apps, we have the kiosks, we have the 
revenue system, we have water rental revenue. These are for rental uh, observation and, and um, information for all our rented units. Next. Uh, we talk about mobile smart apps, um, the use of um, data collection, and um, also applying it to the library system, to the job application, to the building notice using mobile apps. Uh, I believe any apps that we try to um, use in, in the local authority have to answer a certain uh, glitch or challenges in our work process. So uh, in Subang Jaya, it has become a culture that we do a monthly sit down. It is much like the um, departmental um, Kaizen exercise where you identify your problem and try to innovate and um, use the technology in order to overcome that uh, problem that you are having. We are moving towards lean uh, management and it means that we need to reduce the wastage in every step of our work process. So using technology helps us to do that. Okay, next. The rest of my presentation is about the project that uh, we have. Uh, this is the how the dashboard looks like in our uh, command center. We have a tiny command center. We used to have hundreds of monitor uh, for each of our CCTV, but now we do away with that. We have only a big panel and we have an AI behind that that tells us, that alerts us on the algorithm that we have already defined. Uh, for example, double parking, uh, illegal um, hawkers, or if the police needs to use it for uh, identification. We only have a few cameras that can um, read um, vehicle plate registration, but we are upgrading it to even uh, facial recognition, but this um, requires resources. And um, to apply this uh, to to, re to, to, to obtain the same city objectives, we need to connect this to the police department. And sadly, the police department doesn't have a go as good an infrastructure that we have. Therefore, whatever information that we have is normally being relayed to them, not on real time. So this is another challenge that we are facing towards the uh, safe city. Um, on our website, um, there is, um, uh, inquiry page where all the services that we are providing and the normal question that people have that people can uh, go to. Uh, it is also available on the uh, phone. So this these are how we communicate with the people. Uh, it's good that we are collecting all the data, having all the information, but uh, having the people uh, relating to the people and them communicating back to us is another important aspect of being a smart city. Next. Okay, um, the second uh, focus for Subang Jaya is to have a safe city. This is in line with the outcome that we look forward to, which are woman friendly and barrier free city. So, um, in the beginning, we have this not so smart um, CCTV, which is still analog, and then we have changed that to digital. But it's still not smart enough because it doesn't have all the other features like uh, cities in China, for example, which can face recognition. So, um, uh, in addition to this uh, CCTV, we also have a monitoring and security devices that we linked to our command center. Uh, this is still in a very infant stage. Um, as I told you before, that we have this ability. Uh, on the AI to identify the algorithm. So far, we, on, we have only put three algorithms in, but this can be developed into many other algorithms that can alert us on what we want to see. Uh, instead of having to scan through many, many monitors that gives me headaches anyway. Uh, so um, moving forward, um, what do we expect to achieve this? Uh, because we are engaging another partner to enhance the Safe City um, project. Um, Let's go to the next one. Okay, in collaboration with TM1 uh, that has uh, fiberized all the uh, city areas in Subang Jaya into 5G. So we are 5G ready, but what do we use that 5G for? Um, are the people using virtual reality in their daily um, living? Are the shops there using um, 
AI, big data and all. I do not uh, believe that we are up to that stage yet, but having the digital frame, uh, digital infrastructure ready means that the city can capitalize on that uh, in order to use all the system that we have. And we have tested with a few uh, system, uh, one being the smart parking where every 15 uh, car parks is um, fixed with one um, CCTV that can um, measure the timing and the number plate and can send messages to the car owner as to how much they need to pay the parking. This will increase the revenue for car parking by 30 to 40 percent. Um, but um, this may be an expensive way of doing it. Uh, other cities may just employ a bar and know uh, how long a car has gotten into that uh, business area uh, with a simpler technologies. But um, the the ability of the technology is the one that we are trying on where the um not just uh, for parking but also for safety uh, i think a bigger outcome that is uh, required from this project is for safety we have other partners in our living lab uh, huawei for one has um uh, developed a framework uh, towards this uh, safe city using the technology including a body camera, uh, but um, we have uh, tested uh, 10 body cameras uh, for our enforcement offices, and these are yet to be expanded um, with regard to how they use it and at which point is it most suitable to use, because not all of our enforcement are happy with body camera because it means uh, monitoring them wherever they go and they're, they're not quite happy with that. But um when we are doing um what do we call it um enforcement um as a, a a collaboration with other departments um this is really necessary because um uh what do you call it um inter in interruption in our um, enforcement process have happened before um, halangan kepada penguatkuasa penguatkuasa eh? dan um, harming the enforcement enforcement um, have happened before and I think this is where the body camera comes in um, for other projects um, namely barrier free city um, we have uh, run accessibility audit four times a year in um, three of our uh, town centers SS15, uh, Taipan, Subang Jaya, and Bandar Putri. And uh, using technology, uh, we need to identify which um, route that has been used by the um, disabled and where do we put our money in order to, to improve the accessibility uh, for the disabled. Okay, next. Still in the smart uh, safe city program, um, we have, um, I'm sorry, this uh, flood monitoring is another environment program. Uh, I've mentioned the mobile city, uh, CCTV before, uh, collaboration with the M1 and um, smart body camera. Okay, you can go to the next um, slide, please. Okay, this is how it looks like in our command center. We, um, we have only a few panels now, but with the alert system, our enforcement can identify which area that needs to be um, attended by the enforcement and which action needs to be taken. Uh, the other mobile uh, CCTV uh, monitors the um, illegal dumping uh, problems that we are having. And we also have a mapping of um, traffic, um, illegal dumping and um, basically those, those two are the ones that we, we really uh, monitor on. And we can still go to the individual cameras if you want to. Okay, next. Uh, another focus is um, smart traffic. Since um, Sumanjaya is quite notorious for its traffic jam, not so much within the city, but intercity. Since there's a lot of um, highways plying our area, it seems like we are in a perpetual traffic jam, but for the local roads, it has been um, improved by much. 
uh, using the technology. Now all of our um, traffic light have sensors and monitors that will sense data to us as to uh, the uh, length of the queue, the number of minutes that needs to be given to a particular green light or red light. All of this data is collected so that we can know the pattern, uh, daily pattern, weekly pattern, monthly pattern, whether it's raining or not, whether MCO, whether school holidays, so that um, we can adjust the um, traffic light uh, according to this pattern, and some of the traffic light has been linked to the AI so that it can behave um, independently. Um, in the future, we may uh, take off uh, some um, traffic enforcement and police traffic uh, from certain uh, jun junction because we are able to read the uh, queue length of each um, direction on that particular junction. Um, I think Penang have a more advanced integrated uh, transport uh, system. Here in Subang Jaya, we have so far integrated with um, smart bus uh, rapid transit system and uh, traffic monitoring system, um, unlike Penang, which have a few other mode of transportation. Okay, next. Okay, this is how it looks like on the ground. Um, uh, the integrated um, Traffic management system have uh, monitors along Persiaran Kemajuan, with which have about six um, traffic junctions, and this can be um, uh, tailored so that all these junctions can have a smooth green lane. Okay, next. Uh, going towards smart waste um, um, and environment monitoring. So far, we only have uh, two system which is a restaurant waste management module, which monitors how much uh, uh, restaurants are uh, producing uh, garbage. And that can be tailored into the number of time uh, garbage truck needs to go and the volume that is produced by them. Because we are also trying to separate between recyclable um, garbage uh, as to non-recyclable garbage. And all our garbage truck are fixed with um, route monitoring system so that we know if they skip any routes. This is in collaboration with the KDEB, which is the um, waste management companies um, engaged by the Selangor government. Okay, next. Um, another one is the flood management system. Uh, this is how we monitor it because we have two sites ready and we are uh, putting up on two other sites to monitor water level. And once the alert um, level reach, uh, the system can send many messages to um, our offices, uh, including me, uh, using Telegram. So these messages will alert uh, the officers who are ready uh, to be on the ground, which we call Pantas team. Um, and also the engineering department will uh, provide backups uh, to, to alert the people and also uh, manage the traffic uh, where the um, flooding may um, come and and um, engage with other departments as far as um, flood uh, monitoring is concerned. Next. Oh, that's all from me. Thank you very much. Um, what uh, my last uh, message would be that uh, before we engage in any smart application, ask first what we want to prioritize on. Do not try to do everything, just focus on a few things. And sometimes the not so highly um, smart solution can give you the same answer. So if that is the case, even small cities can be smart in their own ways. Thank you very much. Jeff, back to you. Excellent. Thank you very much. And I, I, I like your last point, and actually it's the point you started with. Uh, smart cities are not about spending lots of money. They're about spending money intelligently and well and looking for that efficiency and that leverage from the technology. And if you're not getting that leverage, then why are you spending all this money? Um, and that the, the idea of that living lab, it's almost like planting lots of little seeds and seeing what grows up and then figuring after you've seen what grows, what you can then expand and use and what works best and what doesn't. 
Um, thank you very much. That was really, really interesting. And let me shoot straight into the Q&A session. Um, Anusha has let me know that we are allowed to have a few extra minutes given our technological challenges, uh, which is great. And we've already got a bunch of really good questions um, in the chat. But let me raise a first one about data. And you all mentioned the importance of data and not just data for data's sake, but good data, data that you've actually crunched through and, and made sure that it was the right data. What do you then do with that data? How much can you make it available to everyone so that we allowed all the citizens of your city or even the whole world to start thinking of new applications and new ideas for your city? Or do you need to keep that data secret and protect it because we don't want other people to know what's actually what what you know all this data what the things that are going on in your city how do we how do we do that um and maybe if i could let me let me go in the the same order as our as our original presentation if i could um start with with uh dato to give his his views and we'll then we'll go through the different speakers thank you uh okay thank you jeff uh talking about the data um uh, yes we have a lot of data everybody claimed that they have the data but uh, the can't share the data, those are problems. You know? uh, the, the number of data is not important, but how we use that data, because we lack of the data analytic. Uh, sometimes we have the, like the subterranean authority, like the agency, they have the different set of data for different sets of programs, but the program is not talking to each other about the data sharing. The data sharing is not only within the departments or within the agencies, but within the same uh, organization, the same units and division in the organizations. Uh, this is uh, why I talk about this uh, data integration. This is a main issue we are still facing, especially in our country. Um, and of course, uh, we are also binded by the Data Security Act about um there is uh although we have the sharing data policies but uh some cannot work with this uh, secrecy of the data uh these are uh, things that uh, maybe at the federal level at the mic and also in the mampu uh, have to look into that's so we are looking one of the tools that we are actually trying to develop, as I just uh, said, just uh, in my talks earlier, it's about the MUO, our Malaysian Urban Observatory. This uh, is very good because uh, actually can uh, the people can assess the information and can do the analytical and everything to use the data, but uh, this cannot work without the data integration or so with the data sharing. Um, and of course, to get the data is not easy. It incurred uh, so many uh, effort, cost, money, and so on. But uh, like uh, in MUO, what we, 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 we are what we're trying to do right now, at a plan nation, we have seven sets of data, sets of programs. We have the Mooninets, uh, urban, uh, sorry, uh, Malaysian Urban Indicator, uh, and also the we have the uh, National Physical Data. We have also uh, geographical uh, data. Uh, we call it I plans and so on. But uh, we are trying to integrate these eight programs together and become the one data analytic to use it as uh, for the first case, and of course for the next. Uh, this or years, maybe we had to uh, put another data inside there with the collaboration with the, all the data providers. That's the way we are, what we are looking for. Uh, okay, thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor. What do what do you? How does Penang deal with data? What's your what are your issues and concerns? And opportunities? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Jeff, and so thank you, uh, Atira, for your question. Uh, actually, uh, how we manage our data, you are right. If the data, we don't know how to analyze, that is the useless data. So we must have the uh, correct data and useful data. We are using it 
to analyze the city needs. So actually, we are focusing on a data-driven city, what uh, the city needs. So we have a lot of data. Uh, as I mentioned just now, I'm trying, we are trying to put it into a single platform that's called ILCS, Integrated Local Council Solutions. So we will analyze those data which is necessary for the high impact project, what our people want. So that are the most important. Besides that, because of the city council, it's the third tier government, and we are dealing a lot with the public. From that, actually, we can gather a lot of data uh, to manage our city. So in terms of the uh, data uh, availability, of course, uh, beside those uh, security data, the rest of data we would like to share with the public. For example, those uh, 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 development control data and also the education one, uh, where can we go and how can we help the city together? Actually, uh, mostly uh, other data also, we are happy to share with the, uh, uh, our so-called public also. Excellent. Thank you very much. And and Madam President, in in um, in Shubang, how do you how do you deal with data? And particularly, you've got this, uh, you've got the uh, the living lab. And so clearly, there you've got. Is there a different? Are there different rules about sharing data there than there are for the general public than with cities? How how do you manage your data? You're, you're still on mute, sorry. Hi. Um, data are just numbers, but without these numbers, we cannot analyze them into information. So we need to go to the next stage. Uh, but are data reliable enough, current enough? Those are the things that I've been asking my uh, head of departments to do because in normal circumstances, local authorities are quite notorious for not updating their data. I, I, I think it goes to everybody. Uh, if you do not update your data, it becomes uh, something that is uh, not presenting the current picture of situation. And without that, we cannot uh, make a good decision. So how much data do we have and how reliable the data that we have will be pertinent to the information that we share with the public? Because I don't think the public want to see all the numbers, but they want to see the digestion of that data uh, presented in an information that they can uh, use. Um, for example, um, how many shops provide uh, certain services or, or um, how many hospitals that we have in Subangjaya that provide, um, if, if people are from overseas, they want to search whether they do um, cosmetic uh, surgery, some things like that, and women uh, into that. Okay. But without the information available on the website, I mean, uh, people from abroad can't see it as a whole, uh, can't see the city as a whole. They may um, see one um, hospital uh, website, but they do not see it in a dashboard. So th these are the information that we need to relay to people, to the user, that we at the back end of the office must have a reliable data. I'm uh, embarking on this project called City Directory, where we have all the businesses listed so that people can easily search for what kind of business that they want to go to or engage with in the city itself. So again, data is necessary, but without the analysis, it just becomes numbers. And if you analyze it well, it can become information to the people for better decision making, for better li um, livelihood. And with that, I hope we can reach a certain wisdom of shaping the future of our cities. Mm. And, and if you wouldn't mind a, a follow up on that, um, how about you know young startups and young people have new ideas and they want to develop an app that will apply to the city, but they need the underlying data to test their theories and to, to develop their application. Is that data made available? Um, for instance, in the living lab, do you make that data generally available to people to come up with new ideas? Um, or is that that data kept within the city? 
to our partners who have already have an agreement of data disclosure and data security, we do provide the data to them. But to the startups, um, we we really need to understand what they are, what kind of data that they want, because there are certain data that are limited and there are data that can be open to the public. So um, this this uh, startup companies can come to us and tell us what kind of data that they need. Because to local authorities, data can be a resource that they can sell. So that, that's another aspect of it, whether we are selling the data to the startups, uh, at what price is it um, uh, reasonable for them? And um, I'm also talking about the sharing with other agencies. Some agencies consider their data so priceless that they are not willing to share with us. And it could be vice versa. So data is resources that you can um, gain money from, or it can be shared for the general uh, betterment of the living of the public. So it can be seen in many ways. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. Um, let me go on to the next question, which is about partnerships. Uh, and you all talked about the importance of partnerships and bringing in the right um, partner with the right kind of skills and knowledge and know-how. Uh, you know, we look at different ways of of managing those partnerships. You've got the um, the IOC, which which manages all those engagements. Uh, you've got the Living Lab that starts those partnerships and does early phase. And I'm sure all of you have those technical, you know, companies that come to your office and say, "Have I got a deal for you? I've got the solution that's going to solve all of your problems." And you have to figure out whether to engage with them or do you think about their issue and go out and do a competitive process with the living lab you're starting conversations with individual investors but are those investors the right one to take at the next step how do you manage your negotiating power as a city and if you start if you um, engage with a company too early you lose that negotiating power but if you don't engage soon enough, then will you bring them in? Will they actually come to, to have those conversations? What would be your advice? Maybe I can go in reverse order this time just to, to mix it up a little bit. What would be, would, would be your advice around the way that you engage in those partnerships um, and uh, and how you, you develop them and manage them? And maybe I could start with Madam President first. Okay, who we engage with and what we want out of that um, solution depends on our priorities. If each city has gone through the identification of issues and challenges, they know their pain points. They know what they try to solve. At the same time, a solution providers may offer you their solution, but they may not really understand what we are, um, what difficulty we are, have, we are having and what uh, problems that we're trying to solve. So knowing yourself and knowing what you want, knowing your priority is most important before you engage with others. Actually, it's engaging with those we are interested in only because otherwise it will be um, a salesperson knocking on your door every week. But we are not interested in that. We are interested in the things that can provide solution for us. Okay, granted that they have that solution. Okay. Do is it really suitable for our organization? Is it really suitable for our situation? That is where the living labs comes in. Well, there may be some like the Malay terutang budi, or you feel obligated uh, once they have done the POC. But uh, this this principle of uh, okay, we're trying you. This is what we want. But then again, we are not obligated to 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 take your solution. Um, and, and you must know that eventually our um, acquisition process or the, the procedure for acquisition in Malaysia has to follow a certain procedures. Um, we call it um, uh, the, the acquisition procedures must be open. So you, you are back to the um, open market that, that may be able, be able to, to provide the same solution. But uh, we, we are not sticking to one solution providers. Um, a few selected ones who have experience in other cities or have proven their uh, solution uh, as to be working in uh, other environment may be the best one that we can choose to, to, to try in our living lives. 
Excellent. Fantastic. And um, Mr. Mayor, how would you, um, what has been your experience? With yeah. this you gave us some really interesting examples of, of some projects that you've already done and some of those engagements that you've already created. What, what is, what would be your advice? Okay, I uh, uh, concur with uh, what uh, Juan uh, President said. Uh, independent context here, actually our main partner here is our people. So what our people want, then we will put it as a most uh, topmost priority. Uh, we are not only a partner with any uh, particular people that we want. Uh, if you look at your is PPP, but in Penang, we are practicing 4P, public, private, people, and professional. We want the professional on board with us together to plan, to look for what best we can give to our people. So in the uh, technology context, smart city context, we also partner with the IBM. So sometimes if anybody knock our door, IBM, and uh, those experts from the IBM will be with us together with our, our IT team to see the necessity. So the 4P very important. <coughs> just like what the doctor just now, the doctor mentioned about the uh, uh, Dr. City, uh, how we uh, look at our city for Penang being a second smallest state in Malaysia, uh, we have to be innovative, we have to be work extra hard uh, and also we are happy to share those uh, best practices from other uh, city. We want to see the transformation and we believe that inclusiveness, ownership is most important. Only the people who need our project can sustain. So sustainability is the key things that uh, we don't mind to work for it. Over to you, Jeff. Excellent. Thank you. And that the four P's is so important. And, and, and I think all of you have said this before. There's so much potential in the community. There's so much capacity there. And there's an incentive for them to be working with you to find solutions, to deliver the right solutions, to find new ideas and new technology. And that empowers them but also leverages that capacity. That's that's really exciting. Um, so uh, architect, you tell us what, what's been your experience and what advice would you give about partnerships? Partnership, actually, uh, we open to all. Actually, as and when let, uh, there is any project or any uh, request that the management think that uh, we want to put it as a top priority, with our limited resources, normally we will share or we will work with any partner that can come together on board uh, with the mind, in the mind that uh, we have to focus on our people. So we are looking on the high impact project. So just now we have mentioned that there are few partnerships uh, uh, with us, for example, we partner with those uh, IT experts and also we partner with those uh, people in the Georgetown World Heritage site. How can we do a repopulating Georgetown? How can we upgrade their heritage houses here to bring in the talent into the city? And also other partnership. there are many, many, uh, for example, I would say that uh, how can we partner with those uh, multinational company? Because uh, in Penang, we have a zone called F3 Industry Zone. We have uh, quite a number of these uh, multinational company uh, that can provide us the training facility also for us to cultivate the future talents in terms of the STEM, science, technology, engineering, arts and mathematics for our future uh, generations. Okay, over to you, Jeff. Excellent, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and let me move on um, right away to, to uh, Dato, to architect you. What would, what's your experience been in partnerships? Uh, is it uh, going to me? Yeah. Okay, sorry, Jeff. Um, we are the federal level. Uh, I think uh, we have a good leader 
from the local authority that you want to run I think you, you, you are the master of your area. You know what the best for your uh, area, for your citizens, for your, for your community, what is the best and uh, how long that project can be last. That's the most important thing. You make uh, some investment, uh, maybe with the collaboration with the outsiders, but the first thing you have to know that the project must benefit to the people and so not become the white elephants or at, at, the, at, at the end, so we'll come back to the local authority, come back to the mayor, to the Datuk Banda and so on, to show that whatever the, 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 the rubbish they have left behind because of not proper planning and so on. Um, but in, in, in the federal level, in federal level, of course, uh, we talk about this uh, G2G, uh, government to the government. So before we make any decision, I think the the labs, uh, the detailed studies, discussions must be carried be kept out. Like uh, what are our ministry done with the government of South Korea. We had the MUO, uh, MOU, uh, disagreements and so on. And, and this must be looked into the, not the short term, but the long term process. Uh, but uh, the most important thing uh, like now, um, we have to look with the local sources and local sources maximize the local collaborations. And I think uh, we have Mike here, Dr. Aslam is here. I think um, we can make this uh, local authority with the industries out there. And, um, and this also depends on the, what type of projects. Sometimes it's not really that we need the external uh, collaboration to do the project and so on, because I think most of the local authority, especially in Penang, Subanjaya, in Johor Bahru, they have all, they, they, they have the expertise, they have the knowledge, they have the data that they can use these internal resources actually, but of course they have the knowledge, the, the skills that we need to put it to our officers, to our resources right now. Okay, Jeff, thank you. Great, thank, thank you very much. Um, and let me let me speed on to so we've been given an extra so we've got five more minutes. Um, let me raise one other one more question uh, before we wrap up, and which is one of the challenges of these partnerships is um, first of all you have many of them so you've got a lot of different companies doing different things, and also those companies are going to tend to focus on the things that are most profitable, right, where you can make the most money. So how, when you're developing these partnerships, do you make sure that they are um, inclusive so that the partnerships focus on even the poorest part of society, the elderly, the uh, disabled, all the different aspects of society that aren't necessarily the most profitable? And second, how do we make them interoperable so that those companies think about technology that will work well with other technologies being developed by other companies under, under other partnerships. How do we bring all this together without creating a whole huge headache for the city? How do we do this effect efficiently? And maybe I could go back to reverse order again and go back to, to Dato to start, please. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yes. uh, okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, just must mention that just now. Uh, okay. The, the most important that uh, whatever the collaboration, we, whatever these uh, works that we have done, we have to get the win win situations. That's the most important thing. And uh, the co creation that we have to share the same vision. This is most important. And uh, of course, we must be very careful about this one. We have to have the details discussed in the lab and so on. And um, uh, we, 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 we did done it. Uh, I think that these audit mayors and local authorities that they done it, they do go to the uh, companies out there. Uh, and uh, maybe maybe Dr. Roslan, uh, yeah, I think you are, you are not a panel, but I think, uh, Maybe you have something. What is the mic program? Uh, because we work together with the mic at the federal agencies, 
and uh, okay, can I, I pass it, Jeffrey, to Dr. Raslan? Uh, thank you, Atok, for <laughs> inviting me to chip in in this uh, discussion. Uh, as I uh, mentioned, uh, the partnership should be inclusive. Uh, we need to bring uh, all sector or key uh, player in city development get involved. Uh, one of the area of my, uh, because we are public private, private partnership uh, organization, we always believe uh, working with industry is also equal important while we are planning or implementing uh, any initiative, uh, not, as, not just at the federal, but also at the state and local government level. So the involvement of the uh, industry player can be, uh, can be explored in many ways. I believe our session for next uh, two, three days will be elaborate. Uh, I believe Jeff will elaborate more on how we can engage the uh, private sector or the industry uh, through a different model, which has been implemented in, in, in many countries. Uh, except maybe in Malaysia, we always uh, uh, explore based on our Malaysia incorporated kind of approach, where this uh, new element is not new among all of us, but in terms of how to strengthen in terms of the modality, because uh, with the smart city uh, requirement, the element is also evolved. Uh, we need the best model in terms of bringing uh, all parties, especially public, private, and proportional, as mentioned by that too, uh, from Penang, because uh, the proportional people also can add value from knowledge, from expertise, from technology, uh, uh, you know, exposure they had. Uh, in implementing uh, the best practices, not just uh, in Malaysia, but also at the regional and global level. That's where the collaborative arrangement between public, private, uh, and also the proportion, proportional and industry is uh, equally important, where everybody needs to pay attention. Uh, I think the spirit is there, but the challenge for all of us to realize or to implementing how we can uh, have some synergy between different uh, partners, and uh, complementing each other and see how we can deliver in real manner in the ground. So I, I'll stop here, otherwise I'll become the panelist. <laughs> thank you, Jeff. Uh, thank you, Dato. Fantastic. And thank you very much for being dragged in as a fourth panelist. <laughs> much appreciated. Uh, Mr. Mary, can we hand over to you? Tell us a little bit about how you guys manage um, interoperability and inclusivity in these partnerships. <clears throat> Any partnership, a good partner, important thing that I want to stretch again is sustainability. Anything you want to do, sustainability. If things cannot sustainable, don't waste our time. So of course, in terms of looking for partner, also this is the main criteria that uh, we must work together in a win-win situation. So, uh, City must be benefit. The whole ecosystem must be benefit also. That only uh, we can go for a long term uh, sustainability uh, for the uh, betterment of the city. So, in terms of the uh, the ensuring the system interoperate, just now I mentioned that uh, at our city council level here, we. Uh, focusing on our ILCS integrated local council solution to share among us. At the same time, also, of course, the certain data we uh, will share with the uh, our member in Penang. For example, we have also quite often we have a speed meeting to involve surveyor, planner, engineer, architect, and developer. So this is also another platform we do the engagement. Uh, beside the uh, public engagement that we often do for any uh, project that we want to do for our city. Over to you, Jeff. Brilliant. Thank you very much. And I, oh my gosh, I couldn't agree more um, that sustainability is absolutely essential. And if you don't take care of people, the project will fall apart. All right, if you're not thinking about the whole of the community, then the project is going to have real problems. So completely agree. Um, Madam President, would you mind doing our last intervention for us, please?
Uh, let me pick up from Dr. Yu's comment just now about sustainability of any project. When uh, solution providers come to us, they better come with a business plan. Otherwise, it won't be feasible for local authorities to engage into that project. For example, my um, parking, smart parking is connected to smart traffic light system in a way that the system that is used for smart parking will increase the revenue to cover the finance of the um, smart traffic light system. So um, for a project to be feasible and sustainable over the long run, local authorities must have a way of financing it. And this is best done if the project proponent or project um, our partners understand that it takes financial feasibility in order for any project, any programs uh, to uh, be sustainable in the future. So that, 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 that has become the um, selection criteria before we engage with any partners. And talking about partners and choosing the proposal that is beneficial to the local authority, it's really up to you. The mayor, the president have the power to choose which project they want. For example, there are people, um, I, I believe it's startup companies that come to us wanting to do this um, home-based business platforms. Uh, this is very popular during the Ramadan time when people are uh, constricted by MCO and uh, everybody starts doing home-based business. So how do we engage them? Comes a, a startup company that already have a platform. So we just engage this company to um, employ uh, this one young man and, and get other uh, businesses which caters for informal sector, which caters for small businesses, which caters for B40 um, to adjust to the MCO and COVID pandemic. So th this is how um, the solution provider can come in with the power that is within the local authority to focus on which segment of the population that you want to help. So we have been trying to market um, the products by the B40 uh, women in uh, low cost flats. So they don't have a means of going out because they can be single mothers. They can may not have transportation to go out and market their products. But we help them to take pictures and um, do it in a platform so that their products are marketed into a larger uh, population. So choosing which project uh, that you want to focus on, um, choosing which segment of the society that you want to help, okay, um, it's all within the power of the local authority and selecting the right partner who have the understanding that we need uh, a good business plan so that the project is feasible and sustainable in the future. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much. And um, uh, yeah, th th thank you all so much for your interventions and for your sharing of your experience. And I've realized we've now gone 20 minutes over the mark and apologies, everyone. We've we've extended a little bit because of the technical challenges that we had. Um, and um, so I just want to close our session, thank all of our panelists for their fantastic interventions, sharing all of your experience, years of experience um, putting these things together and it's really nice to see that we're all learning, right? Every day is a new opportunity to new, learn new things, constantly changing, constantly evolving, trying to leverage in all this technology that itself is constantly changing, um, developing these partnerships and how they work best and how to leverage the capacity of our partners, um, but also the leveraging the capacity of our own staff and our own cities uh, and the community itself. So very, very exciting. I want to encourage you all for the next um, for the next three sessions that we're going to have. We'll be digging into these topics even more, talking about partnerships, how you develop them, how you create them, how you build them, how you manage them well, um, and then how you also develop your own municipal institutions, regulations, so that you're ready to to uh, encounter and develop these partnerships. Um, so with that, I'd like to hand over to Anusha for any other closing you may have. Thank you all. Thank you, Jeff, and thank you to all the panelists. I hope um, everybody had a fruitful session today. All right. Um, without further ado, uh, I do not want to waste, I mean, take up more of your time. 
Uh, we'll end the session today and please join our second session on the 9th July at 10 a.m. for the full training. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all. Have a great day. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Oh, okay.